Hurricane Milton is likely less than 24 hours away from making landfall. And when it does make landfall in Florida late tonight, it will likely be one of the strongest storms the state has ever seen. Meteorologist Cody Matz tracking it for us right now. Hi, Cody. Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, this storm is just a monster. We'll bring with it a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and of course water. And one of the big issues will be storm surge. Now, this is the storm surge forecast from what we call Sarah. It's an acronym. So it's the Coastal Emergency Risk Assessment to give you kind of a general idea where the highest storm surge will be and how that can actually drastically change over short distances depending on where the storm makes landfall. So here's the state of Florida. So Lake Okeechobee is down here. Fort Myers is down here. Here's Port Charlotte. Here's the Tampa area. This line was the original forecast, the center point from the National Hurricane Center a couple of days ago. This would drive in huge amounts of water into Tampa Bay. The purple colors, that's 12 plus feet of storm surge. But considering now things are shifting a little farther south, still very much in that cone, this is the forecast today. So about 48 hours for, uh, 48 hours later, we're taking us less than 24 hours from landfall. So if landfall's here, notice Tampa Bay now turns blue, meaning very little, if any, storm surge, which is great news for Tampa. Not so good farther to the south. Sarasota getting some surge. Venice Beach through Port Charlotte and Fort Myers could get 12 plus feet of storm surge. So it doesn't take much movement to give uh, drastic differences in the overall storm surge that push of water that shoves on shore and allows a lot of water and a lot of inundation in some zones. Now, taking a live look at Sarasota, Florida, which is likely a little bit closer to the likely landfall here. It's quiet this morning. There is some rain around as the first bands of wind and rain start to arrive. Now, this satellite footage, there it is, shows the storm from above. It's massive size and strength has basically shut down obviously most of Florida. 185 mile an hour sustained winds is where it peaked yesterday. Walt Disney World, Universal Orlando and SeaWorld are all closing today and most airports from Orlando to Tampa to Fort Myers will be closed by midday today. And in case you were curious about how we get some of the data used for tracking those hurricanes, this is footage from yesterday when a NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration plane, uh, hurricane hunters is what we call them, flew into the storm. The name of this um, uh, aircraft is actually called Miss Piggy, which I find kind of funny. Uh, as you'd imagine, some incredible turbulence as they work uh, to kind of record conditions both at flight level where they are likely 20 to 30,000 feet up. And then they actually send down what we call drop sons or an instrument from the base of the plane right through the eye to kind of record all the conditions all the way to the sea itself. Now the information they get on these flights help us better understand and kind of forecast not only this hurricane but future hurricanes itself. You, you're thinking you had some tough turbulence of whatever yeah. flight you were on. Yeah. At least you're not doing that. Yeah. Obviously the hurricane get, getting closer. We'll have uh, we'll keep you updated over the next 24 hours and of course how this whole thing unfolds. 160 mile an hour currently sustained winds may, still making a category five. It will weaken slightly but the impacts are still going to be great across central and most of South, South Florida. Sure, and you hit some of those spots that Minnesotans know very well. Fort yeah. Myers, Naples, Sarasota, all those spots. All those spots are in real trouble. Yeah, all right, Cody, thank you. Yeah.